dynamic subdivisions and real subdivisions uh, this is something I have struggled with and in today's video I'm going to be telling you the differences and what you should know about each of these mesh states for you to be able to use ZBrush effectively all right so I am uh, fairly new to ZBrush and uh, if you have watched my previous videos you would uh, you would know this by now but as I'm going along my learning, I'm trying to involve you guys as a beginner so you know uh, the things I'm struggling with, which you might be struggling with as well. So let's hop into this very quickly. Dynamic subdivisions and real subdivisions. All right. Now, this UI is customized, so I'm going to load up the standard UI. Okay. This is what yours should look like. This is ZBrush 2021. Okay, let's go ahead and add a cube to show these this example. Okay. All right, now a cube is in. Now let me go ahead and make this a poly mesh so we can sculpt on it. Shift F, okay. All right, now let me cover dynamic subdivisions first. So dynamic subdivisions, as I'm sculpting here, if I hit the key D, Okay, we're going to have this uh, warning pop up. Currently, this mesh has zero subdiv levels. Would you like to auto activate activate dynamic subdiv instead? Let's go ahead and click yes, and you can see that we have subdivisions on this mesh. Okay, now we can go ahead and keep sculpting. Okay, and you can see we have subdivisions on this mesh. Now, one thing that is a bit confusing is the fact that dynamic subdivisions isn't actual subdivision, right? So if I enable this, you can see we still have the same geometry that we had before, but with subdivision levels on, okay? So dynamic subdivisions put in a simple manner is an illusion of subdivision. It is basically like hitting the preview option in Maya, or if you're from Blender, this should be similar to uh, subdivision surface modifier okay so nothing actually happens to the geometry you just have a preview of what it will look like if it had subdivisions all right and if we hit shift D you can see that our mesh comes back because nothing was actually done to this mesh okay D shift D okay on my custom UI uh, let me load that up restore custom UI I have dynamic subdivisions up here now I would not use this button at all but I just have it there. So if dynamic is turned on, I will know. If you're working with many sub tools, this can be confusing. So sometimes it's just useful to have this up here because it will light up and I will see that, oh, dynamic is turned on. So I know that this is not an actual subdivided mesh. Okay. So uh, let's. So what are the advantages of having dynamic subdivisions? Dynamic subdivisions, like I said, gives you a preview. So basically, you have actually less geometry to work with so in essence your computer is doing is not doing as much work as it's looking like so the memory count is low i don't know if that makes sense because you're not actually having this amount of polygons okay and it's actually good for like blocking out things because you have the illusion of a smooth mesh uh, as opposed to let me just turn this off as opposed to something chunky because if you're like me you just like things looking super smooth and clean so this is really helpful okay now some disadvantages of um, dynamic subdivisions let me turn this off let me go back to the standard ui okay some disadvantages is that well like i have said before you can't actually do much with it i can't sculpt details in because there's actually nothing here so i can't really sculpt details because i don't have anything on here these are fake the illusion of uh subdivisions so there are no actual subdivisions which also means that poly paints cannot work well so let me go ahead and activate this uh let me go ahead and paint uh, my apologies let's turn on rgb and as you can see, if I enable dynamic subdivisions, I can't really go into detail with painting because my geometry is actually low res. So this can't do much for me. 
okay so not to look down on dynamic subdivisions because some of the functions are actually very nice and it's something that is very helpful uh, it's it's really nice okay so I want to cut in at this part to mention something I forgot uh, to mention while recording the video it just popped into my head after recording so I thought to put it in there so so I want to go ahead and add a cube okay now let's go ahead and turn on dynamic subdivisions and let's say yes okay now if you go into your poly frame mode which is let me load the standard ui so we're seeing the same thing i think that's over here okay over here on this side it's going to poly frame you will notice we have our orange dots if we zoom in we can see them closer we have this orange dots here now i'm sure you're wondering what these are well basically these are would i call them markers to show you where the original geometry is okay now i'm going to be toggling between switching off dynamic and putting on dynamic uh, let me go into my uh custom ui so if you look over here i have dynamic so just watch this and watch try to watch the two at the same time so i turn it off and you can see this is the point where the orange dots were and i turn it back on you see this is representing where where the actual geometry is okay so i can actually if i zoom in very close I can make my brush really small and you can see I'm not smoothing I'm not touching the actual geometry but I'm actually touching this and you can see it's affecting the mesh so that's what this is basically doing these dots are nothing to be scared of but in case you're having you just see that I can actually manipulate the geometry because this is where the geometry actually is okay so let's continue with so Okay, I feel like I've gone too long on this. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, actual subdivisions. Okay, I'm going to go into a cube. And if we hit the hotkey control D, I believe, we will have actual subdivisions. Okay, now in my custom UI, let me go ahead and bring my custom back. Where did dynamic go? Okay, this is not a poly mesh 3D yet. So let's make that a poly mesh, poly mesh 3D. Let me go ahead and start this over and make this a poly mesh 3D. Now over here, I have subdivision count up. So I know the amount of subdivisions I'm having. So let me go ahead and hit control D and that will subdivide the mesh. Now these are actual subdivisions. So if I hit control D again, I have subdivided the mesh. So you can see these are actual polygons that are put in there. Okay. Let me try and smooth this out. You see, it's very, I won't say difficult, but it's harder to do because there are actual geometry that are keeping this mesh at this form. Okay, so I hope this is making sense. So let's go ahead and try to paint this very quick like we did before. And let's go into RGB. And you can see I can actually paint on the geometry. If I go up another level, you can see. If I go up another level, you can see. All right. Now, I'm sure you must be wondering, well, if I can get this amount of detail and everything I need with actual subdivisions, uh, why would I need dynamic subdivisions? OK, so let's go ahead and praise the subdivision a little more, because with subdivisions, we can go ahead and let me change to another brush. We can turn off colorize for a bit. We can sculpt on this. Sorry, let me fix my color. OK, we can sculpt on this. And we can go down some subdivision levels. If we are not getting uh, the effect we want, we can smooth this out on this subdivision level. We can come back to about five. Then we can put some details on here. If I just do this, let me make a heart. Pardon my heart, I'm not with my tablet. So we can do this. And if I go down some subdivisions, you can see that it looks like it's not there. But if I get a really large brush and I move this and I go up subdivision levels so you can see that the detail is still there with the newly displaced geometry and this is just fantastic so this is something that I really like about ZBrush uh, but let's go back into the disadvantage now the problem with actual subdivisions is I would advise you don't use it unless it calls for it if you can stay away from this as long as you can please do because now here's a problem 
Okay, let me go back to the standard UI. So we're looking at the same thing. Restore standard UI. Okay, so here's the problem. Some functions now with ZBrush will not work properly with uh, real subdivisions. Let me illustrate that. If I activate symmetry, let me deactivate symmetry and I do this. With dynamic subdivisions, I can do uh, mirror and weld. Let me go into my custom UI so I can do something. I can do mirror and weld. But you see, they say this function cannot be applied with multiple subdivision levels. Okay, let's go ahead and try a clip operation. All right, let me use a clip rect. Okay. You can see now we have this, and this works fine. Uh, there are some other uh, tools that don't work as well. Um, I can't really remember most of them right now. I think the Z modeler will not work properly. Uh, well, there are some other tools, but like as you keep using this, at some point you want to use one tool and you see a message about how you can't actually use this with subdivision levels. Okay, so that's an actual problem. So just to recap, uh, when to use dynamic subdivisions. Dynamic subdivisions, you can use this when you need to get a preview of what your mesh would look like with uh, actual subdivisions on. Then you can just turn that off and still use all the functions available. Uh, actual subdivisions, you want to use this when you have, when you need to put detail on your character or on your sculpt. Uh, well, that is basically it. I hope this video was informative. I feel it was a little too long, but I hope it was informative. Uh, I enjoy talking a lot, so I feel that affected the length of this video. But I hope this video was helpful somehow. If it was, uh, do well to hit that subscribe button and show your love by dropping this video a like. And tell me down in the comment section if you have some tips and tricks for me uh, getting into ZBrush and I hope you guys had fun. I certainly had fun making this video. I never take your time for granted. Uh, thanks for stopping by guys.